Brought to you live from New Hope, Pennsylvania. It's the <laughs> Matt Beck Show. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Two, three, two, three. On this episode, we discuss buying your salon from your salon owner. Mm-hmm. We also discuss upgrades in beauty school. Very important. And what else did we talk about? What else did we? T- oh, um, separate bank accounts between uh, your behind the chair needs and your salon needs. Where to put Where your dollars? Where to put your dollars? In my pocket. Welcome to The Matt Beck Show. This is our weekly podcast with Thad Bolanized. Yep, yep, yep. And, uh, and me. And we are... Whoa, whoa. You didn't sound too excited. You're like, this is The Matt Beck Show with Thad Bolanized and me. Oh, I don't have to... And I feel like I don't... I don't know. Yeah, but you should be excited about, about yourself. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good call, Thad. I, I like that. Um, all yeah. right. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is uh, episode whatever. I don't even know, but we'll just call it the Q&A part of the vlog for the week. Um, really excited to go through everybody's questions. Thank you for submitting those questions. If you want to submit a question to this show, best thing to do is to use the hashtag the Matt Beck Show on anything social media. But if you definitely want me to see the answer, then you should go to FSE Social app. Yep. Officially. Um, yeah, the FSE Social app. Go to fsesocial.com. Uh, you can download the app for your iPhone, your Android device, and you can start talking with all the hairdressers on there, posting questions, posting your work, uh, and getting involved in the community because it's really awesome. I'm really psyched for everybody that's on there. And actually, a couple of the questions from today came from uh, from this forum. And you can also watch uh, the sibling rivalry of Dre and myself as to who's going to be number two on uh, the top users. Yeah, Dre and Thad are fighting for who's the top user on the app. So She doesn't know this yet. But you know you're getting a like from either Dre or Thad if you post something on there. She doesn't know this yet, but I hit her computer and her phone. Oh, nice. Yeah, and, Good and job. her iPad. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's get into the questions. No more wasting time. Um, first question. da 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 Pull up the thing. We only have a few questions today, but they're really good questions and kind of long questions. So, um, and we don't have a ton of time. So, first one is: If I'm going to open, uh, this is from Lisa on our free salon education community. Um, if I'm going to open a booth rental salon and operate one chair myself, should I have two separate accounts for the salon and my behind the chair needs? Hmm. I. F- I feel like the behind the chair needs and the salon needs are one and the same. Yeah. Um, But definitely have two separate accounts between those needs and your personal account. Yeah, because, I mean, you're going to be giving yourself a paycheck. No matter what, the entire thing is your business. So, like, um, even though my salon is not a booth rental place, I still give myself a paycheck from the work that I do. So, if I... Uh, take clients all day Friday I cut myself a check for the clients I did just like I would cut anybody else a check and then so it is two separate accounts I have my personal account and I have my business account but I don't have two separate business accounts there's no there's no reason to do that even if it's booth rental I don't think there's a reason to do that treat your booth rental as your business write yourself a check from your business and then put that in your personal and that's a legit way to go about it yep cool That was easy. Sounds legit to me. Yep. Um, All right. Next one. This is, I believe, uh, let's keep it anonymous. Um, I've decided, she she or he uh, says, "I've I've decided to ask my current owners if they'd sell me their business. I'd love to take it over. Do you have any suggestions on how to approach them? Is this brand Uh, new? I know. Right. Uh, is it no secret that I aspire, or it is no secret that I aspire to be a salon owner and that, um, Oh my gosh, I can't read this. It is no secret that I aspire to own a salon and there have been comments slash talks before, but not in a while. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Also, I love your Salon Gratitude website. So uh, I can assess a few of those things, even the website. So um, I was in the same situation. I worked here in this building um, for a couple years 
I found myself being more involved in running the actual business side of this. The owner moved away. And um, so th the opportunity approached and I, I just called him up and I said, this is what I have to offer you. I would like to buy your business. And he was very grateful. I think this is a funny question. I think you just like came up with a clever way of telling your story. I know, right? Because <laughs> this question actually describes like exactly what you did. Yeah, I it is. Like as you I think it happens a lot. I think a lot of people, um, this is how salons either, um, this is that transition that you make. So you're either right now about to go work somewhere else, maybe go try to open your own, but it's harder to open your own than it is to buy somebody's that is already established. I was very lucky in the fact that I had already established my clientele here, so I didn't have to lose any of that. Mm -hmm. um, I had already taken over his clients because he moved away. So I had a book where even if I didn't hire, and this was like my big thing at the beginning, um, even if I didn't hire anybody else, I could pay the rent here based on the hair that I did and still uh, be okay. The business would be able to stay open. That gave me the freedom because as long as I can survive, I've never been afraid of um, of like the str like struggling um, because that's what part of business is. So like now I'm not f afraid to fire anyone, and I don't say that in a weird way. It's just you need to be in a spot where you're not afraid because if you're afraid to fire people and you're afraid that your business is going to fail if you fire people, if you've set yourself up that way, then um, then your business isn't going to be successful because everyone else is going to try to run it for you. So my big thing is try to buy the business if you can. The problem with salon owners is they overvalue their business because they don't realize that most of the time it's the salon owner that brings in all the money. Uh, and then uh, in most cases, it's that's the busiest person. And then the other people aren't as busy. So they're putting the value on their book. And it's really the value of a salon for the most part, unless it's a really profitable, successful salon with employees and the, and the owner isn't the main producer. Um, the value is only in the equipment. That's true. And I think that that... Um, assumption that their business is valued more goes yeah. back to the fact that a lot of salon owners are learning as they go. Yeah, they didn't necessarily go to business school. They didn't like th this is their first run at a business. They're not necessarily CEOs for, like, from another company. Yeah, they don't. They're they're learning about how to be a business owner as they go. So they wouldn't know exactly what uh, yeah the value of their business is because they've never dealt with that. Exactly. So um so I would. To have somebody take a look at it, you really need to know the inside of the business and understand that. And um, I think I overpaid for um, this business a little bit in the fact that it was my customers at that point. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it had been my customers, but um, but you know what? Don't but you don't want to underpay for it either because it's not you're not there to rip anybody off. So mm -hmm. just offer what you can. If they say yes, then then great. I think a lot of people think they're going to build up a business, sell it for a million dollars, and you know, and then that's the retirement. I don't think that that's the typical salon transaction. So just um, you know, I I would assess how many chairs it is. If you want to repost uh, and ask me that question privately, I would definitely. Um, assess, help you kind of assess that. But just look at the books. You need to understand the business before you put in the offer to buy it. I already knew this business. I knew um, I, I, we were writing the paychecks. We were uh, the ones that weren't able to cash the paychecks. <coughs> like we, we knew everything about this business when, when we bought it. So you need to know the insides of it. All right. Hopefully that helps. And then our salon website, we actually use a company called Wix, uh, Wix.com. And it's such an easy way to make a regular website. Like any hairdresser anywhere, any human being can make a website on Wix. It costs, yeah, there's a free version, but then for $9 a month, you can have your own domain name. I think we pay maybe $15 a month for Wix. But it's literally the easiest thing you could possibly do. You don't have to know how to make a website. You just have to know how to kind of, they give you a template and then you add your pictures in and your menu. So it's really, really simple and uh, affordable. Um, all right. One of the last questions comes from, let me just make sure this isn't anonymous. No, it's Jason. Uh, Jason sent me a message on uh, email. 
So that's pretty cool. I have a question for Matt. I'm a cosmetology student who has a steady flow of guests. And when I don't, uh, when I don't use my time to work on a mannequin at school, we have a system designed to reward students who reach certain set of goals to move up in level. I reach the guest count and haircuts and colors, but fall short on other categories such as referrals and add on treatments. How important are these levels to employers? How important are they to you? I feel that I am growing as a stylist regardless whether or not I move up in level and remain in, uh, intensely passionate and excited about learning with each and every guest. Just curious. Also, can students purchase products from the site <laughs> um, at the professional cost? Okay. Referrals and uh, add-ons are very important. Uh, they're basically how you grow and give yourself a bonus. Right. So I would say that that is a hard yes that uh, employers definitely look at those as positives. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Anything that you're ever going to do that seems more difficult than other things is probably what's going to make you more successful than most people. Like there's a point where um, people sit in a comfort zone and yeah, you can do cut and colors all day. You don't have to go hand out cards. You don't have to. There's a lot of things you don't have to do. Um, and you're still going to get customers, but it's that little bit that you go above and beyond where you're going to see that it's going to separate the successful hairdressers from the non-successful hairdressers. Like uh, add-ons are important. When are add-ons important? Like if you're booked all day, then maybe an add-on isn't imp as important that day. But if you have a few clients that day and or if you're booked that day and you're trying to book other days or maybe two weeks from now you're not as busy, then you have that busy book to offer add-on services that two weeks from now you could do on those people that you currently have that you're busy doing right now. So there's a lot of, like everybody looks at what their day is today. And then I love like watching people on Facebook. It's like, oh, I'm not busy today. Shit. Like, that's yeah. when they start worrying about it is the day that they're not busy. Yeah, and I was just going to say, add-ons yeah. are also great for lost uh, to make up lost revenue. So let's say you have a foil and a haircut, and then you have like a men's haircut following that. That men's haircut cancels. You add on a conditioning treatment. You just made up that men's haircut. Yeah. You didn't lose any money. You gained a lunch break. Yeah. Maybe like during that like 10, 15 minutes uh, while the uh, conditioning treatment is uh, hanging, uh, hanging out if you put them underneath lights or something. Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been a person that's very driven by uh, my paycheck. So, like, when I was in hair school, if a client canceled, I was like, hell yes, now I can go mm -hmm. do something else. Yeah. And even practicing. Like, I would rather sit there and practice on a mannequin than deal with, mm -hmm. you know, hair school, like, just <laughs> whatever. So, like, but when I got into the real business of, of doing hair, I realized that... Um, like that relationship, everything that you're doing with that guest is so important, uh, to, to bring, cause you got to bring value to a person. Like you have to, every guest that sits in your chair, you can't just do a cut and color on them because the more services that you add onto it, the more value you're bringing to your situation and your relationship that you have with that person. And so you're going to make them stay with you. Like dad might have a guest where he just does a cut and color on, um, and then he, they can't get in with Thad that day, so they go somewhere else where they can get a cut in color. But if Thad's doing Olaplex, and so he sold you on Olaplex and how much he loves it, and your hair can't go without it, and maybe a super silk, and you know, like all these different services that you do, uh, different highlighting techniques, now it makes somebody scared to go somewhere else because they feel like if they ruin the relationship with Thad, how are they gonna find all these other things? True. that they're used to getting. So, you know, add-on services not only are a boost in your paycheck or, uh, you know, from an income standpoint, but they're also great for relationship building as well. That also goes, you can double that uh, with uh, referrals because if you have clients that are so devoted to you that they're telling their friends and family to come to you, yeah, they're less likely to leave you as well. Exactly. True. True that. Mic drop. Mic drop. All right, cool. So that is the, the, the podcast for today. 
We got to do some hair. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we enjoy we enjoy the questions. Um, enjoy getting together every week. I would love to continue these conversations on the FSE Social app. So go to the App Store, type in either uh, just type in FSE Social. It will come up, and uh, and that's pretty much it. But you can get involved on the conversation with us there, and you can watch the fight between Thad and Drea. Right. Well, they can't watch the fight. They can. They'll just see the. They just the, see the, you the, popping uh, up uh, and uh, down. Uh, yeah. Our, our, uh, or you can try to beat that Andrea, which would be even better. Yeah. Or you can so. help me beat Drea by a conversing with me, or b <laughs> help me hide Drea's electronics so she can't use them. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. So you can follow Thad. Thad Bolognese. Uh, Thad Bolognese. Or I everything. Just, I think I'm just Thad Bolognese on uh, FSC. I don't know. Yeah. And find him on FSC. It's like my own You'll cell phone number. I don't know. <laughs> but we have a couple thousand hairdressers now and counting. It's going up about 100, 200 a day. Um, so I'm enjoying having everybody get on there. And uh, follow us, everything at Free Salon Education. And uh, appreciate all the, the conversation you guys are making with us. Uh, use hashtag the Matt Beck Show if you want to ask a question or post your questions on the forum app. Done. Got anything? Oh, I'm just Thaddeus Boland on FSE. I looked it up. Okay, cool. Thaddeus Boland. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next show. Thanks.